Hello, everyone. My name is Carl, and today I'm going to be talking about revolutionizing application architecture. Uh, we're going to be talking about Wasm in the database and why I'm super excited about it, and also how I see Wasm just helping out with so many parts of our ecosystem. Um, so just getting into it, uh, as I said, my name is Carl Sever, and I am a senior director of engineering at SingleStore. SingleStore is a database company. We sell a distributed relational SQL database, lots of buzzwords, but what matters to this group is that SingleStore embeds Wasm. So you can take any Wasm module and uh, compile it against WASI, push it into single store, and run that code directly inside of a massive distributed relational database. And it works, it works great, and I'm actually gonna be doing a live demo and a lightning talk. So we're gonna see how well that goes. <laughs> so why put Wasm in the database? I believe that Wasm in the database allows us to build apps easier and safer. And what does that mean? It means that we can basically make apps uh, we can, we can reduce the complexity of applications, but we can also ensure that things like state is handled in a more sort of atomic and transactional way. Databases are really, really good at this. This is sort of our bread and butter, and uh, Wasm is really good at moving compute to wherever the data is. So if we combine these two ideas together, we can actually get something better than, than either idea by itself. So let's talk about serious business. So this is some serious business that I'm doing on my users. And as, as you can see, I'm looping through all my users and running some update functions. Very important for my business. I might have like hundreds of thousands of users. And ideally, I would say that most engineers writing this code expects this code to execute transactionally. You want all of your users to be updated or none of your users to be updated. Anywhere in the middle is very complicated. But of course, we've all been here. Somewhere in the middle of that loop, <laughs> You know, life doesn't go the way you think it goes. And so, you know, many, many years ago, people came up with a solution to this. They said, well, we can use this thing called a relational database. We can create transactions, and we can pass transactions through all of our code, and we can bundle up all these changes together. And uh, this, this works. This, this does accomplish the goal of making this serious business operation transactional and making it happen either entirely or, or not at all. And, and when an exception occurs in this world, we have some concept called rollback. We can reduce the state back to where it was before the transaction started. Um, very, very cool. But anyone who's written transactional code and very large code bases know that this comes with a cost. The cost is complexity and the cost is performance. Not only do you have to now manage these transaction objects, moving them through your code, and this can be quite, quite complex. You might have to go through multiple libraries, maybe even third-party libraries, to get the transaction object used in all the right places. But you also potentially have a lot of performance cost. Um, in this naive piece of code that I have here, uh, I'm now round-tripping to the database for every single user in my, in my data set. This is cost that is sort of unavoidable because we need to be able to run custom code custom business logic on each of these users. Um, that business logic, as of yet, doesn't, doesn't exist in the database. We can't push it there. But everyone would probably agree with me that this is, this is complicated, this is, this is silly. What we really want is we just want this. We just want to write our code the way that we originally intended it to be. Go through all my users, run some custom logic, and, and be done with it. So this is the story of Wasm in the database. By putting Wasm in the database, we allow you to write code that looks like this and we allow you to have that code intelligently pushed down into the engine, and for the engine to actually understand that, well, what you're doing is looping through your users, running some update operation on each user, and we want that to be done as close to the data as possible, reducing any round trips that we don't need to do. And that is a story of Wasm, and I'm very, very excited. You know, a lot of the talks uh, this morning have been forward-looking, looking forward to where we see Wasm going, and this is yet another case. We don't have everything that we need to be able to accomplish the goal I just set out, but we're getting there. We have the basic foundational building blocks, and for that, I'd like to do a quick live demo. Hopefully I have time. Uh, and, and specifically, we're gonna go to space. So let me just exit out of the presentation. So. This is the Wasm Space program. Um, I do have to plug in my laptop because it's Linux and it's old, and if I don't, this will never render in real time, so uh, <laughs> we're getting there. It mostly is looking okay. The Wasm Space program is a demo that I created to show off what it's like to put Wasm in a very large distributed system and run a non-trivial workload in that system. So if we enter the Wasm Space program, we see one little solar system. This is just running on my laptop. Um, Inside this solar system, we have nothing. Let's, let's go ahead and create some things. So this is a little spaceship I'm gonna create, and I'm gonna create some energy nodes. Right now, my spaceship is doing nothing. 
Behind the scenes, this spaceship is represented by a literal row in a relational database. That's all it is. And every single second, uh, this relational database is essentially running that, that serious business operation I showed earlier. It's looping through all the spaceships and running some WASM code on every single spaceship. And that code is actually running inside of the engine, right down beside the data. There's, there's no other backend service or anything like that. So we have this spaceship. We want it to do something. So let me open up my fancy, fancy Rust code. And uh, I wrote this macro because I didn't want to walk through a bunch of Rust code, and this is a lightning talk. So I, I have this macro which allows me to sort of fuse together a bunch of basic AI behaviors that I've already written. So my strategy blank, which is the strategy that this spaceship is using, has no behaviors. So I'm going to add in strategy, uh, chase energy, save that. And, uh, and then we're just going to compile it. So this comp compilation step is just, you're going to quickly read through, just cargo WASI build. So we're just doing a regular Rust WASI build. Uh, and then we're just using the MySQL command line tool to literally just upload that WASM file to the engine. That happens very quickly. And right away, without doing anything else, our spaceship has now moved to the closest energy node. And if we create a couple more spaceships, we can see that they, they exhibit that behavior. And that's because now that AI is literally running that WASM code that I just uploaded to the database. Now, this is really cool, but I mean, anyone, we can obviously simulate a couple of spaceships on any, any laptop. That's not very hard. What might be more interesting is upgrading to a much larger cluster. And so this is the real live WASM space program. You guys can race me and try to go there before, I, before the demo completes. Um, in this live demo, there is 32,000 solar systems. And in each of these solar systems, there's tons and tons of spaceships that all are living out their little spaceship lives uh, inside of this massive virtual universe simulation. And we can just jump anywhere in this demo, and we see spaceships doing various things. And none of these ones are very exciting, but we can just jump to like another solar system and see what's going on. Uh, and in total, this particular simulation, so you can see there's spaceships running around over here. Um, this particular simulation has over a million spaceships that are running and simulated in real time. Every single uh, 769 milliseconds, to be precise, about four and a half million WASM function invocations are happening in this cluster. And that's all happening in real time. Every single operation allows a spaceship to see its entire region of space around the spaceship, make concrete AI decisions about what it wants to do, issue those turns, and, and execute it. But even more interestingly is the entire turn, that 750 milliseconds of operations that are going through and updating all this state, runs in one transaction. And that is the future of putting WASM in transactional systems. I believe that this will make applications much easier and safer to build. Um, and that's pretty much my talk. Mind blown emoji. Every time, Carl, you're so good. Any questions for Carl? There's a question in the back right, it looks like. Hi. Um, so uh, could you have the spaceships fire torpedoes and the torpedoes be affected by gravity? <laughs> the okay. answer is yes, but I didn't do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here's my serious question. Um, so um, you're building WASM in the database, and what about SQL and PL SQL? So I, I sort of have that Oracle background. How can, can you compare what, what you're going to be able to do with WASM in the database with what people use SQL and PL SQL for? Absolutely. It's a great question. So let's go ahead and look at all the PL SQL that is happening. So right now, um, our, the limitation of single store WASM is that we can run WASM UDFs. We can run WASM UDAs and TVFs, which are technical words in database speak for basically functions that operate over the data itself. But we don't have yet the full procedural level SQL, but that's next. And so what you're seeing on the screen, hopefully, is the run turn function. This runs a single transaction. You can see we have start transaction here. And this is a bunch of PL SQL, which basically runs a bunch of update queries over the data. And those update queries themselves run WASM functions. So we are basically using WASM single sort of push the AI down to like the lowest level. Uh, to the actual sort of uh, rows, but we still, because we don't yet have that next level, which is the procedural level, uh, we don't have the ability to basically put this entire function in WASM, but we want to do that. That's going to be the next stage.
Liam's having to do a little work out here. Uh, this is really cool. Um, it, it reminds me a little bit of like what you'd imagine like a digital twin system for. Uh, do you envision using like component model and the newly announced worlds to describe an object and give it certain capabilities and characteristics and integrate that into the database? I think that's a really cool idea. So a lot of databases have looked at the idea. If I understand your question correctly, like it's around using worlds to actually model objects within the database and be able to interact with them. And other databases have used this sort of object model before. They've they've tried to experiment. Like I know that SQL Server has like .NET objects where you have like custom types with you can send and receive messages to them. I think that's another story that was worth exploring here. Um, we are part of the Bytecode Alliance. We are heavily involved in the component model, and, and we're trying to make sure that everything we do matches what you guys are doing. So um, yeah, that's a great idea, though. Back in the, the link here around 2008, .NET experimented, c -sharp experimented with smartly or semi-smartly moving code to the, the database. So trans having code that was in line in your application program and moving segments that were relevant to the data to the, the database. Is that something you're exploring at the moment or are you strictly focused on just moving a, a, an entire WASM module and it's got to be called in some other way? Fantastic idea. So we actually have a bunch of experimental work that is going on in the Python ecosystem where you'd be able to have like a regular Python notebook uh, and have basically Lambda functions trans dynamically pushed down into the engine. So where we have you know, a billion rows sitting in single store, you might want to run uh, some Python code over those billion rows to do some data science workload or something. So we want to be able to dynamically sort of handle that and push that down. So absolutely, it's, a, it's, a, it's another area that we're exploring. Um, this is fantastic. Could you please elaborate more about how WASM UDFs could be helpful for um, isolating transactions you mentioned at the very beginning in that serious business, and how will it affect the asset properties of database? So UDFs are the simplest case, because fundamentally UDF is, is state in, state out. They're, they're not stateful themselves. So we can actually just put them into our regular transactional framework, which already supports running arbitrary code, um, except Right now, with single store before Wasm, you had to write the code in, in the special PL SQL language. Now you can basically run, write your code in Rust, but the asset, the atomic unit of like a function that takes some state in and, and, and returns some state out, uh, just automatically inherits the transactional properties because it's 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 I didn't put it's state it's stateless, right? So we can rerun it. Um, we can automatically sort of put that in. Now, as we get into the higher level, so going back to this other uh, the, other, the other question I received about PL SQL and, and procedural logic, that's where it gets a little bit more tricky. And that goes back to the last time I gave a talk here with Bailey, we talked about WASI data. And WASI data was the higher level, like talking about the story of basically bringing the transactional layer up into the WASM, where you can actually have like just your Rust code say like start transaction and actually do like stuff that looks like almost like transactional memory at the application layer. Um, and we want to be able to do that type of stuff as well.